Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to the Stylogram Podcast. This is your host and fashion BFF Malika Singhania and we're going to talk about all things stylish. Today we have with us the super hot actor Vivan Bhatina. Literally guys, the room just got 20 degrees hotter with him here. He's going to tell us all about himself and what gets him ticking. Hi Vivan. Hi Malika. How are you? So good to have you here. Thank you for having me and it's a pleasure. A pleasure too. So Vivan tell us about yourself. Where did you grow up in your childhood? Uh nothing really that interesting but <laughs> I grew up in Mumbai. Uh, I'm born and raised here and um Um, besides that i went to um, if you want to know about my schooling i went to manaji cooper school and i did my college in jaihind college uh, never really did much or attend much of college sorry sir if you can <laughs> let me know anyway shiv dasani was my uh, principal at that time anyway uh, but yeah i i grew up i'm a complete bombay boy um, i uh, started um, my career actually started with me in college in fact uh, started at really young age and i kind of fell into it you know i was do, i was doing um, i was interested in theater and stuff like that at a uh, early age because it was e- the easiest way to get to know girls and it was like you know <laughs> Um, That's honest. <laughs> yeah, no very honestly because it was like the and like you know at one point I became popular in college and stuff like that. So I was like president of the French club and I can't speak French and stuff like that. But it was great fun. But you know you do all these stupid things in college and then uh, you never know where it's going to lead you. And I was at Malhar in fact we were performing and we were just rehearsing outside the hall and um, there were these scouts from Levi's jeans were there. and uh, they you know they were like hey you would you like to do a commercial and there was a friend of mine who was i was hitting on at that point friend yeah you anyway, know so she, i was uh, quote and quote friend yeah, quote and quote friend so they kind of they was like oh you know both of you all can do it and stuff i was like cool i get to hang out with her so i'm like they be like pay you 2000 rupees i was like wow let's get paid also it's amazing wait and how old were you I must have been 18 I think 18 19 okay. I don't know about that age anyway so when Levi's was launched in India I was part of that first campaign and then um, I never really thought about it actually I just like yeah cool you know I was in college I was like whoa this guy's done Levi's and wow 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 everything I got really popular and that's what I, that was the extent of that and then one day what happened was another friend of mine was going for uh, some clothes trial or something to polygram which is a which was uh, Radhika Rao and uh, Vinay Sapro's office at that time and they were very famous for making music videos so they saw me and the casting person she said that you know you know would you like to do a music video i'm like yeah why not what i don't even know what a music video is at that point so i'm like yeah, i'll do it so i know and um, Yeah, fun. and then you came in Falguni Patas yeah, video, yeah, exactly, right? and then which Falguni. was many pile hai chankai, exactly, and uh, that kind of became a monster hit overnight. It really did. Like that was my, I wouldn't say childhood because I'm not that young, but <laughs> I remember watching it a lot as a teenager, and I can't believe I'm talking to you right now. Exactly. I mean, I'm. I, it's very weird because I, that is one of those videos that people still come back to me and say, "Oh, when I saw you in that video, I had such a huge crush on you." And stuff. I was like, "Okay, that's amazing," but I mean, like that was like so yeah, long ago. Yeah, but you ago. were like the teen. Teenage girl crush at that time. Yeah, I was like this cutesy chocolate boy, kind of Parsi boy. So I guess that <laughs> that kind of worked for me. But yeah, so one thing led to another. I did like eight music videos. I was I went for I went to um, funnily enough uh, I went to Mr India. And, I know it's to so tell us about that the grass in Mr India, right? Yeah, and you know, the <laughs> thing is, I mean, I, you're not going to believe it, but I was like I'd gone to hol- I'd gone for a holiday to go out with my friends, and my I was coming back and I was nice and fat and round because I just had a lot of beer and prawns and God knows. Bottle. And my mom's like, listen, I'm sending you for this uh, pageant and all because it's my mom's dream to see me as, um, you know, this uh, model and this and that and all. So she oh, said, wow. I'm sending you for this contest and all. I'm like, yeah, whatever, doesn't matter, you know, whatever. So I, I went. Uh, so they called me for this uh, local round and all that. And I went there completely like super overconfident because I had nothing to lose, you know. So I just went there, stood on stage with my big fat pot belly, and like I just stood there, and and they asked me a couple of questions: What do you do? Where are you from? And I answered really well. I answered, you know, funnily, and I had a sense of humor about me. So uh, you know, the, they really liked me. They said, uh, you know, what would you do if you win and all that stuff? So I said, uh, depends on how much money you, how much, what the prize money is and all. Are you so, serious? Yeah. So it was like uh, he, I was just making nonsense because I, I never expected to get through. So uh, and then I got a letter from them from uh, the Bitlers saying that you know you're through for the finals in Cal. Wow. 
So I was like, okay, I'm going to Calcutta. Fine, that was great fun. So I did it for fun, and I was there, and I used to be the biggest, um, you know, um, um, I don't know what I call it. I mean, procrastinator. I, I, I used to run away from all the dance class and the yoga and all that. Wait, so you I, had dance class? Yeah, yeah. So we had this stupid dance that we had to do for the introduction of Mr. India and stuff. <laughs> where and I can't really dance. I mean, I have no no uh, qualms about it. I I can't dance really well. So I can move a little bit and I can you know freestyle it and all. And I told the choreographer he was from Denmark and he was really 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 sweet. And he said, listen, you know, I'll put you at the back. Don't worry, but you dance. I said, listen, I can't move to save my life. Eventually, I ended up in the center. Some <laughs> and uh, I was so stressed about it. I think that was the most stressful part of Mr. India. The rest of it, I wasn't even bothered. And people were really like, you know, pumping their muscles up. And like, they were, I was just like... That's what there. I was going to ask you. You know, we all know so much about the women's uh, Miss India. Uh-huh. But what's it like with Mr. India? Are the men like on an ad- adrenaline rush and like pumping up? And like, how is it? What's now, it like? Now it's changed quite a lot. At that point, of course, it was more about Mr. India. There, there were two contests. There was like Mr. India and there was um, the Glad Rags contest. And there were, Glad Rags was more about your body and about you, uh, your body image. And uh, Mr. India was more about your personality and what kind of person you are. So that's... That's why I went for that one because it it made more sense to me because Wait, I, I had one no more body. question. Was uh, there a swimming costume round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm telling you, like I. Oh, I there went, was. There was. There was. <laughs> we. I stood on stage very, uh, very confidently in my. Uh, but I had lost a little bit of weight to to my advantage because of all the dancing and all that nonsense that I did. I'd lost a little bit of weight, so I looked presentable. I was. I never had a six pack or anything, but I had a flat tummy and I looked nice. Like you know, that was that was the extent of it. Okay. And all these guys were ripped in all that stuff, and they were like six pack, eight pack, ten pack, all that. And I wasn't bothered. I was eating biscuits and whatever I get my hand on. Oh my god, they must hate you. Yeah, they used to hate me. Everyone used to hate me. And then when I won, they used to. They were like. Cursing the life out of me. They're like, you have rigged it. You have done something. You must have slept around. You must have done. I was like, I didn't do anything. I just like, so I, I, was I answered gonna, well. I was going to ask you, what are the three qualities that a that a guy needs to become a model? But I don't think you'll have an answer for that. No, honestly, I I fell into it. I wouldn't advise anybody at this time, you know, this time and date in 2016 to even become a model. Why? Because it's it's pointless. Uh, you won't make any serious money. You know, there are, there's a model born every minute. Unless you, of course, unless you are exceptional and you have like you're an, you know, you're an A plus and you, you need to be there. You have the body, you have the everything, you have the talent and all, then go for it, you know. But most of them um, don't, you know. And everybody today has a good physique. But is it different from the, the Miss India? Because, you know, it is a gateway to Bollywood for the Miss Indias. It the guys don't get shit honestly they don't get the kind of attention that uh, the Miss Indias get and you know the backing because they have Times of India backing them and stuff the guys don't really get it you know they don't they don't and even for us when I won the contest after that people knew who I was but you know it it didn't help me in any way I still had to pave my own way okay. so that was what uh, made it even tougher because we didn't get that push that we really required okay. and in fact it was so strange that they didn't even use us use their own winner in their own uh, branding campaign because they were like oh because in India every, everybody's got this huge ego so it's like oh the agency responsible is different from this part of this thing oh. so Mr. India does not uh, so the agency and like one of my friends is doing the campaign and he calls me up he's like listen didn't you win the Grasam thing he's like I said yeah so he's like why am I doing the campaign then I'm like I oh don't know God. I'm like anyway so and he didn't participate no, he didn't participate he was just a model and he you know and he ended up doing the campaign I was very happy for him but I was a little yeah. irritated but with the fact that we didn't really get the yeah. option yeah we yeah. didn't even get so the option so do you think your struggle started after uh, winning because you did a lot of TV after that I um, actually went for MTV and uh, I entered the VJ hunt and I won that uh, with uh, Anusha and Ramona and Aditya and me and Sophie. So okay. we were the five winners and uh, unfortunately for us, they never had any work for us because they already were overloaded with VJs. Oh so my God. yeah, so like after a year or so, we kind of, we, I mean, I quit and I wanted to move to bigger things and stuff and I wanted to do something. So I, um, um, I moved to television right. and theater. So I did about seven years of television after that. Yeah. In fact, in fact, I I was one of the cast of Kyunki Sansbi Kabi Bauti also. Yeah. I did that. It was strange. Which but was the best experience in uh, television for you? See, you know, you know, television is like I'll tell you what. There, it's it's extremely tough 
but there's no good experience it's all hard work real determination grit really biting down and saying that listen i need to do this and for me the best part of television was that it really f- I, it was like trial by fire okay. i mean you really had you know you had uh, you had to put yourself in a situation where directors would abuse you and say bloody kahan se leke aaye is gade ko mcbc and all, you know give you in your face and say you can't act and what the f- is wrong with you in like you know so um we i mean used to lit- i've i've been in tears at one point literally because you know like on the set and i used to be like what the f- i am maybe i can't do it you know and that kind of thing yeah. and my hindi wasn't that great at, at that point so i used to sit with the sound guy and he used to teach me how to improve my clarity and i had this major issue of roll you know, ro- you know like rolling, rolling my tongue. tongue yeah rolling my tongue and i used to kind of i speak very fast if, as you can tell so uh, he had he had to you know teach me how to slow down enunciate and he said listen hear yourself and he said okay you start reading a hindi newspaper and after that i got really good like i used to i used to do it religiously so i yeah. got real really good like in fact i i once i met i met ayan once at a party or something and ayan says bloody hell your hindi is damn good yeah and i was like yeah so, so why is that surprising so he said no but your bhava how is your hindi so good i said yeah i took some practice yeah but i mean then i hosted shows in hindi i did you know i did ifa in hindi i did lots was of stuff was this while you were doing tv because after tv then you got chakde which was i think your one it was during national actually big break. it was during actually malika you know the thing is with um, with people like me who are who are struggling and their struggle never really ends hopefully it does some time or the other but um it what happens is that you have to do multiple things you can't put all your eggs in one basket as they say so i was doing tv and i used to do films on the side so i never really went all out to do films the only t- i took that call when i when i uh, got totally frustrated with television you know like it it just the money's weren't there anymore the market had dried up the same old bullshit was being made so i kind of took a step back from that and it's been about 5 6 years since i haven't touched television at all and um except for your factor which i did but that was it's a reality show it was not yeah. nothing to do with you know commercial uh, yeah. in the uh, gc stuff and uh, t- i took a conscious call and because i spoke to my wife i said you know i'm making a pot load of money but i hate this thing i just hate it why there was no creative satisfaction forget creative see you know thing is actually i've learned one thing you know they everyone says oh you should always love what you do and stuff like that. but the love what you do is fine the love what you do doesn't pay you yeah The it's very rare they, where you yeah, get Yeah, it's very rare and I congratulate those people who can who love their job and say that oh I love this and it pays me so bloody well. Right. It never bloody happens to me at least. I've never come across that point where so I I in fact wanted to make an alternative career as well. So I took up photography. Right. I studied it. I religiously studied it till till a point till now where um I'm one of the I'm I would not blow my own trumpet to say, but I'm one of the best beauty guys uh, in beauty and fashion. Oh, really? Uh, out there, yeah. So oh, I do. We didn't know about this. Yeah. So tell us about this. Tell us about your photography. Uh, yeah. So basically, I do beauty and fashion, as I okay. said. Okay. And uh, I was always, I was always interested in portraiture, and my dad was a photographer also, and I never really took it up. You know, is that point when you, whatever your dad says doesn't yeah. like yeah, whatever types. You know, he had this expensive camera. I never really used it. and it just like it's still with me but i can't use it anymore then i started um, one day i just said you know what i just started clicking and uh, it just happened and i started studying online and i started i took took it up seriously yeah. i started investing in in my own lights and my studio all the stuff and that's when i started really enjoying what i do okay i love photography i love creating and stuff but it doesn't pay the bills okay. so you have to come back to stuff like film television film yeah. is amazing i mean like you know like hero was one of the best experiences of my life it was the hardest thing to do but yeah. it was amazing like even when i did when i shot uh, completed dangal with mr khan just now and that also i mean with 3 months of training with you know yeah. with him on that for wrestling yeah so wait one second so let's backtrack so okay. then you finish tv mm. and then you got into photography or you got into film okay there's this is a long story <laughs> been in the industry for over almost 20 years now so anyway so i continued uh, tv and film at the same time okay. at about seven films so what do you think has been your most significant movie till now not just in terms of your role but in terms of your experience and in terms of your growth personally um hero has been one i think uh, my favorite 
film that I've done because not only because I had uh, it's been the largest part of you know largest part that I've been offered and it's because Nikhil allowed me the space to act and grow and you know shape of my character which is very very difficult because automatically when you're a model and when you come from and you look a certain way people assume you can't act yeah you know you can't do this and ah nahi no, isko nahi jamega i know and when we were talking outside also i told you that you know the first day was such a humbling experience for me because everyone everyone had these expectations of like nothing from me yeah and then when i delivered they were like oh wow this guy can deliver so maybe we should use him and maybe we can you know do and then they start seeing rushes and they were like okay maybe we can do this and maybe we can do that and you know and from one thing led to another and i remember nikhil uh, coming to me and saying you watch people are going to be lining out outside your door for offering you roles and didn't happen but i mean i unfortunately no but i think you got a lot of uh, critical acclaim for it i mean i think it def- your performance and your look definitely created a buzz and uh-huh. i think you prepared a lot for the movie because you looked amazing yeah um, that was a uh, that was hell i mean like i i remember i was um, i'd already invested more in my body and in my look than what i had got paid for the film and i was putting in money by the day you know and i had in fact i was like losing money so i told you know, i was telling sir that you know uh in fact when they offered me katti but i was like please give me some more money because i need to pay for that film <laughs> so uh, in fact they uh, based on hero they offered me katti but and then, you know unfortunately the films didn't do well but they were um it i guess too many people too many cooks and all whatever doesn't matter i think they gave you prominence though and i think that you and tanisha definitely stuck out as like the two anchors of the show which is what i felt and i'm quite involved in the whole <laughs> celebrity uh the reality tv shows i hope uh, colors tv also saw it that way but and for unfortunately i think they had their money on some other people anyway yeah we, I, that was a wonderful experience tanisha's good friend and you know it was in the first thing that she told me is we we going to argentina uh, we love such a great time and it was like the hardest thing that any both of us have ever done she got a little luckier luckier than me because she didn't have to do all the physical stuff but i got killed i was like 45 days of bloody boot camp for me and um, yeah it showed it actually showed that you were doing some of the toughest stunts i think people depended yeah. on you a lot as well yeah it was like i was the go to person and in fact you know when uh, by the end of it i was Uh, dealing with a lot of things there were lots of the, the you know there were a lot of inside politics between players there was lots of politics from the channel and there was lots of things happening and you know and things shady things happening which we were really it was happening in front of us which we were like uh, trying to avoid and not get into because you know we wanted to play the game you know we came here to play the game and you know by the end of it i realized a lot of people had come with minimum guarantees and stuff like that which i didn't even know existed so wow. yeah so i didn't even know that all this happened so it know. is rigged uh, to a certain extent yeah i mean like oh, it's not rigged but yeah you know you they can generally gen- you know gently push you in that direction i guess so they kind of see at the end of the day you must realize something that it is a show it is entertainment and that's where i made my peace with it when i when i said this to myself saying that vivan it's a show like every tv show they need to make it entertaining right. it's not their fault yeah? yeah you know they they need to show because what happens is like you know they can come up with the most elaborate stunt and on paper it sounds amazing but like somebody like me would go and rip the stunt apart in one and a half minute yeah and uh, then they wouldn't have any footage he's like are ye to kar liya ab kya dikhaye <laughs> and they didn't have anything and like you know none of us were we weren't fighting they tried to do that also they they got they got one of their big boss experts in and stuff like that and and she was like she's so sweet but she's she's so like you know she's like she'll try and pull these little strings and say that oh you know she like you know they poor arjun will get this thing in his mic uh, mic and ask us these shady questions and try to get us to fight and initially we kind of played into it and we fought a bit and stuff like that but at the end of the day we were like you know why are we fighting you know why yeah. this is not we, we just come here to participate we used to make peace with each other and then support the other team so they were like what the hell is going on how can you all support the other team you're supposed to do this so none of the things that they were trying to do really yeah. worked actually they experimented a lot with us this is the first time that they did try teams okay and then they tried to what <laughs> what happened was when they did a team selection um what's his name i forgot his name also you know uh, the other captain uh, against tanisha he goofed up he chose a very weaker chose a weaker team now what happened was we started killing them in all the stunts so then they started then they what what happened was then they couldn't really show 
you know the it it was too imbalanced so then yeah. they what they did was okay take vivan out of this equation and yeah, put him I into the that, other team yeah. and i was like what the hell why me what the hell you know so i was like okay put him in the other team so i got put in uh, put in the other team and then i got made captain of the team and the team had already fallen apart because uh, the previous captain had not held it together he didn't know how to captain them and they were all young the youngest kids were with me so i had a broken up which i had to get this team back together and then they would question everything i did like you know uh, not the no, team members but you know arjun would say why did you choose this i think it was a wrong call i'm like yeah that's because i lost the stunt if i had won the stunt then you would have said it's the bloody right call to do yeah. so i'm going by technical things you know like if and uh, if they don't deliver it's not my fault but eventually it became they're like oh you're the captain you chose them so you're in elimination I'm like what I don't know what's happening yeah, to me. Yeah, you went quite a few eliminations. I went in all. Around. I was like till the end I was still in elimination and in fact Arjun was like you become the elimination expert to keep throwing people out. I'm like that's not what I want to be. I, the, in fact there was only one elimination that I didn't go into. And wow. it was yeah because um I think I we kind of uh, nailed the stunt initially. So that was it's yeah, and honestly it was a it was a really trying time because um back home i'd never been away from my family for that long so my wife and in fact uh, she was having a hard time dealing with it also because 45 days is quite a thing so she was uh, in fact dealing with it so she would call me on the phone and the um, you know the thing is that you you can't even carry a phone to the set you can't yeah. uh, there's no there's no contact as such and you'd go, get like 3 hours of sleep because you come home and it's awkward uh, trying to eat something get back to sleep and the next morning you've got to stand at 7 o'clock you're going to be in the bus so uh you know you would try and finish a conversation also like at 3 in the morning because that was the only time that you could you know the time difference or whatever and it was it was just bizarre how so many things are uh, you know play on your mind at that point yeah. and by the end of it i think i had just given up i didn't lose the stunt i just like threw it away yeah. because i was like i don't want to do this anymore you know i just i was so frustrated because it was i was tired and what happened was in fact um And there was a stunt. There was a bus stunt where uh, me and Siddharth were against each other, and they had hung Tanisha and uh, was, I forgot the name. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> anyway, so they, uh, my teammate, they had hung up from, <laughs> from the bus, and um, uh, I'm very bad with names. I don't know what happens. Um, so they hung, and we had to pull this chain and like lower them and stuff like that, and then run to this point and dig into something and find a lever, and then uh, get it to sing, and then go and blow this bus up and stuff like that. and what happened was what obviously you guys didn't see was the stunt was stopped three times why some some technical malfunction or siddharth's chain would get stuck basically for on his side okay so i by the time i actually was saying i was exhausted my in fact my hands were bleeding yeah. there was blood on all the chains and stuff like that there was my, I, and uh, by the time i got to i have never been that physically exhausted ever and that was like one of the last days and i gave it everything and i lost and uh, besides giving it everything we didn't and we caught up to them also after doing all that you know all that drama we caught up to them we reached the mound and our bloody lever was right at the bottom which even the stunt people couldn't get through with their hands we had to dig through our hands oh. they had to use a shovel to get to it okay. so there was no way to get to it you know and that was so frustrating for me and i i just gave up i went yeah. to, i just went to the van and went to sleep so that went to hospital because he his hands were cut and stuff like that oh my i was god. like listen i can deal with it it's okay just give me some dettol oh and my god <coughs> literally yeah, he had to, he had exhaustion and everything he went to the hospital we both fain, almost fainted because it was like hot and we had to there was a it was 100 feet and uh, every time you pull the chain the th- i think every 5 meters it moved an inch okay so you're pulling 5 meters it would move 1 inch down yeah oh god it was hell oh my god so yeah all these things that no, was that no but i think it's great that you're sharing these stories because <laughs> i think it tells our listeners that success might look easy but it never is there's a lot of struggle involved yeah and it never ends <laughs> and it never ends and hopefully it will end soon yeah, with the uh, with dangal on that note let's take a break and when we come back vivan is going to tell us a really funny fashion pop up that he made Hi, I'm Tejas. Hi, I'm Jishnu, and we are the nerds from Geek Fruit. If you're a nerd, this is exactly the kind of show you didn't even know you were looking for. And if you don't believe us, you can check out Geek Fruit exclusively on Seven. May the force be with you, you nerds. Hey guys, welcome back. And now we're going to talk to Vivan about some style tips and some tips and tricks that he uses. Okay. So, Vivan, tell us a few trends that you follow these days. 
Um, the only thing I keep myself updated about is probably my hair because that uh, my hair changes my face quite a bit. And the moment I kind of let go of that, my I start looking older, or I, you know, I don't, um, I I don't look my best. So that's one thing that I do. Uh, so how keep, do you tell tell our listeners how you kind of take care of your hair or groom it? Are there any tips or tricks that they can apply um, as well? Honestly, the old I I'm a believer in the you know the old is gold kind of thing, and the old methods are the best. And um, there is a, there is one oil that I kind of use, and I I you know actually your hair is only about how good your scalp is, okay. and uh, that's one thing that uh, I've understood how th- you know like the thickness of your scalp determine, determines the thickness of your hair and the mobility in it, and you know how much it moves and stuff like that. And uh, that is the that is the key actually. Yes, it does act as a conditioner oil, but the uh, oil is responsible for you know getting your scalp a little thicker and giving it that um, you know that essence of collagen or whatever that requires to give you that much hair okay and so that's what i use i don't use anything i do, i try and avoid as much product as i can hair sprays and all kill your hair yeah straightening weightening all that stuff i don't do any of it so i just so how often do you oil your hair once a month or twice okay. a month maybe i don't even uh, the thing with uh, the the best thing that my dad taught me was my dad had a full head of hair before he passed away at 60 so he told me is you know don't wash your hair every day and uh, i said why you know sticky so sweaty and stuff he said no you just need to wash it with water you don't need to wash it with shampoo every day don't put chemicals in your head if you don't need to okay so that was one thing that i um, you know and as far as uh, i i buy a kale shampoo Okay. I use I use all natural products. I don't use anything that is got a lot of chemicals in it and stuff. I don't believe in those things in any case. Okay. So I buy an organic shampoo. I buy an uh, I use oil as a conditioner. Yeah. And those things really work. I mean, like, have you seen a rickshaw wala who's bald? No, Half, actually. I mean, to be sounding very racist, but all these bhaiyas have great hair because they oil their hair every day. Yeah, that's yeah, true. It's it's so funny, but it's true. I mean, yeah. like it's it's a simple goddamn technique. Yeah. And that uh, you know the thing that Amitabh Bachchan promotes and that stinky oil that he uses yeah. is amazing for your hair. Yeah. So that's, I mean, I just I just follow that simple technique, and that's that's all I do. Of course, I do my hair stylist and all. Please keep giving me these um, fancy products to use. And but when I do go out for a event or something, I kind of gel my hair or I use a little bit of product, but that's about it. Okay, and any tips on uh, how to maintain your body? Because obviously you have a great body, but obviously our listeners probably can't achieve that without a lot of work. So something that could be quick, because most of them are on the move. Most of our listeners would be. Um, on the move. You know, unfortunately, where your body is concerned and where you want to, what your physique goals are is different for every person, and what your fitness goals are is different for every person. A simple thing that I can tell you is that um, sugar is the the worst for you. I mean, there's like a billion things that that sugar does that in your body that can harm you. So avoid sugar, and like it's like it literally like a narcotic where you will be so addicted to it. It happens to me also. I'm a big sugar fiend, you know. Like I, I need, if I have cake one day, I need like sugar the next day. I need my sugar fix, and that's 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 your telltale sign of something that's bad for you when you need it. So avoid sugar in your coffee, in your tea, and all that stuff. Avoid sugar as much as possible, and have natural sugar. if you can if you want to that's fine but if you avoid sugar and uh, just start with that uh, that will be your first step you'll see yourself a lot healthier you won't find yourself sleepy in the afternoon find yourself energetic you'll find yourself sharper and uh, those things make a lot of difference of course uh, then later on of course it goes to different levels where you want to eliminate carbohydrates you want certain types of carbohydrates yeah. certain foods and another quick tip i would give you is that don't eat anything that comes in a packet okay You know, don't don't do that. You know, eat natural food. That's the best for you. Don't eat chips and don't eat all that stuff. It's, unless right. you're dying in a desert yeah. somewhere where you have to eat it to survive, don't eat it. Yeah, but those are easy enough to follow. So yeah, it's easy. I'm glad you gave them to us. And tell us a fashion faux pas that you might have had or you've seen recently. My biggest fashion faux pas was my Ed Hardy phase. I think. When I went through this really weird phase of wearing these tight T-shirts, I didn't even have a great physique at that point, or any great body, or whatever. I wear these really tight Ed Hardy T-shirts, and I and I look like a clown when I see my pictures now. And I was like, why the hell did I even go through? And of course, one more thing that I did was, which was very happening in the modeling scene that time, was wear lenses, colored lenses. And I just I look at myself and I look I look like a blind person or something you know somebody who's got a cataract or something like that and I was like I I look so stupid I can't believe I did this and um, even when I got into photography I realized one thing is then you know a lot of people say it but I've seen it through the lens where uh, what you have naturally is yeah. what's meant for you yeah 
no matter how much yeah there are people who have had cosmetics work done where it works for them but um it will you know it there are those instances are very far and few yeah and just uh, there's just too many things that can go wrong and like you know <laughs> that's why i mean i would say that stay away from anything that's unnatural trend stick to what you think if you lose enough weight or you think you generally will look nice and you look your like your best you right. so that's what you all you require actually okay great so on that note let's take a short break and when we come back we're going to have a super fun rapid fire round with vivan Hi I am Ayaz Meemun in season 2 of Cricketwala Chronicles we are going to discuss some of the biggest controversies to hit the world of cricket in this season we will talk about corruption racism and just poor sportsmanship that have been demonstrated over the history of the game and we'll also marvel at how these controversies have only made cricket stronger in the long run tune in to Savan every Wednesday and remember to follow the show to get updates when new episodes are out Welcome back guys. We're here with Vivan and he's going to answer some really fun questions. Are you ready for our rapid fire round? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Okay, great. Vivan, where would you shop on a budget in Bombay? H&M. Okay. Secret to success? Keep getting up because you're going to get knocked down very often. Okay. Style is? Style is comfort. What is your everyday style? Comfortable um I guess comfortable is the word that defines my fashion. If you see what I'm wearing now, just an, it's a t-shirt that makes you, you know, uh, makes you look good, and uh, uh, jeans that fits really well. That's I think that's enough for anybody. Okay, most fashionable in Bollywood, male and female. Most fashionable Sonam is obviously uh, female. There's no, there's no doubt. Um, male uh, is a little hard to say. Uh, who would I say is the most fashionable male? Ranveer. Ranveer Singh. Yeah, Ranveer Singh. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. When did you first realize you were famous? You know, honestly, the first time I realized I was famous when I did one episode of Newki, where I just had this one stupid turn and look into the camera, and then everybody on the road, and I went for a film after that, and everybody on the road knew me. I was like, what the hell? I just did one turn <laughs> and all, and like everybody knew me and they were screaming out my name. I was like, wow, that's amazing. And nice. Which actor did you most enjoy working with so far? Um, Amir Sir is by far the best. Uh, you know co-star ever i mean he's so he's so understanding so humble and he's, it humbles you in fact that he's so humble and i keep asking him i said how are you so nice i mean like you know, it's just amazing and uh, he's by far he gives you these amazing tips and you can pick up so many nuances from him it's it's amazing right favorite word favorite word uh, i'm i'm not a lot of abuse on this thing no my favorite word is muffin that's my pet that's my dog okay. and also my daughter Oh your daughter okay. Yeah no my do- as in like my I oh, don't have a kid. Oh your dog is your daughter my okay. My dog is my daughter yeah. Um what's your shoe size? 11 45 um, yeah. Okay. Biggest pet peeve? Uh biggest pet peeve I that's something I don't like right? I mean like yeah. I get irritated with. I mean that's uh I hate people who make a uh, noise when they eat. Okay. I just it I don't with know. With their mouths open. Yeah, with basically. their mouths. My wife does it all the time. It's just like one bang my head against a wall. It's just We let her know. Yeah. Can you do any impressions of people? I used to be able to do a lot of voice modulation because I used to enjoy it and I used to watch a lot of Johnny Dever and stuff like that and uh but uh impressions right away um <laughs> it's I don't know it's incredibly embarrassing. Uh but uh yeah, I can do a little bit of Amir sir because I've spent some time with him. Yeah, please so, do. So um With him, everything is a little bit hurried. So it's like, ha, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Ha, okay, okay, I'm doing it. Ha, no problem. Ah, Vivan, you, you come here. Come here. Come here. It's like you know, it's like that kind of thing. <laughs> That's so, amazing. Yeah. So he and he's he has this thing where he he speeds up in the middle and he comes back down. And it's so cute. And he's this very uh, wonderful way of speaking. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
how would I quirk up a really interesting pocket uh, square? Okay, uh, and or a tie, a really interesting tie and a pocket square. That combo really works. Like interesting, as in like polka dotted or a different color. Different color and like you know something something unique. I mean, um, you know that would really stand out as a color and stuff like that. Even even a pair of. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but if you wear some slim pants and uh, slim trousers, you can see a nice pair of socks, and that is also looks really interesting uh, with a good pair of shoes. So the suit is really it. it there's a lots of parts, lots of parts to a suit, and when I did Raymond, I realized that uh, very well because they used to, you know. Everything from your cufflinks to everything matters. Yeah. So something interesting, one interesting element really makes a lot of difference. Okay. And uh, Purvi Sikka has asked one style rule that all women should break. All women should break. Um, don't follow Bollywood. Okay. Um, you know, follow international trends. There are there are some wonderful things that are happening abroad, and don't be afraid of. Uh, Oh, my body type is so so. This looks good on me. Like my my wife does this all the time when she says, "Oh, I have broad shoulders, so I can't wear this." And I'm like, "Who the hell has come up with this damn rule?" Yeah. You know, so you guys should break it all the time and like try out different things. Don't get stuck in the same thing that you wear all the time because that's that's. And as a photographer, I would say that's no fun. Okay. Thank you so much for talking to us Vivan. We look forward to watching Dangal and wish you lots of success in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you listeners for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned for our next episode. You can catch us on Facebook at Stylogram Official and on Instagram at Stylogram_Official. Don't forget to download our episode on iTunes and SoundCloud and you can also subscribe to our episodes there. Catch you soon. Bye.